welcome to the Dumb Guys 2019 Sleepers video. Super excited. I know a lot of people are excited for this video. Um, got Heath on the line. Um, Heath, what do you think about 2019? I think this will be a fun year, even though like the uh, slow free agent market is kind of making research hard because there's a lot of guys we don't know what team they're going to be on yet still. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um just I'm always looking forward to baseball season starting. I'm always happy, you know, when the Super Bowl happens because that means baseball's yep, coming you know soon. Baseball's next, and, right? Uh, yeah, and so uh, I think it's right around the corner. And um, I'm actually starting to get stoked because it looks like the Giants are getting serious about Bryce Harper, and uh, yeah. it'll be fun to see him on right. my team. They're they're, they're really trolling him uh, on uh, on social media with the uh, with the yeah. pictures of him hugging Posey and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get. I guess Boris took uh, the Giants' new president up in his private jet for a private meeting, and um, Buster Posey made comments about his, I really hope my team's trying to win and not tank type comments. Yeah, um, right. So I think that they're really feeling the pressure to put together a entertaining team. Yeah, I think I think uh, the Giants getting Harper would be a good move for them, and it would bring back yeah. a, a little bit of respect because, you know, as you know, being a Giants fan and, and me giving you a hard time about it, they always seem to you know, pull off these like middle of the road deals where they're not bringing like big names. And I mean, San Francisco yeah. is a big market team, man, and they need to give back with by, by bringing in a big player. And I think Bryce Harper would, would kind of make a statement that that's what they're doing. Yeah. And the feeling around town is time for the next Barry Bonds move. And that's yeah. why they tried for Stanton last year. And it's time trying for Harper this year because the, the fan base is ready for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that'd be good. Yep. Okay, so yeah, but at least that's that's wrapping up and yeah, yeah good to go. Baseball seasons and it's coming quick because uh, the season starts on March twentieth is the first game um, of uh -huh. the season and so you know you got to get your fantasy teams together, you got to get your your drafts you know organized before the twentieth, which will which will kick off the first week of uh, of fantasy baseball. So with that, yes. um, you want to talk about our new Patreon uh, account, the new yeah. the new uh, the new page and the new uh, um, Patreon leagues that we're getting going. Yes, and uh, so we believe we found a great way to for like kind of like our most dedicated fans to really get connected with us and play fantasy baseball with us. Um, we tried to do this last year, but it kind of turned into the Wild West because we just kind of did it through an email um, um, list, yep. and uh, it was just unverified people, tons of leagues. Yeah, we um, had a lot of um, leagues going. We didn't. We I, yeah. I think we kind of suspected that there were people playing like multiple managers in the same league. Yeah, things like that. Yeah, um, yeah, it was fun, but it was. You're right. It was wild west. I think that was a good. Uh, yeah, a good description of it. Yeah, and so this will be more verified. Um, you know, you do have to pay, but we realize like not everybody wants to, but we might have that one percent of people out there that do want to. So we want to make that available to you. Yeah, and it'll just make it. Enable us to do more, uh, really, because yeah. I mean, it's just like YouTube costs money and uh, editing videos, microphones, all that stuff. Yeah, so I mean, uh, it the, just enables us to do more for you guys. I don't think people understand that. Like, we don't just, um, you know, sit in front of a camera and, you know, spout out things and get tons of money from YouTube. We don't. We're not. We don't make anything from YouTube. We actually we lose. We've lost money for the past five years doing this. We enjoy yes. doing it. We enjoy talking about fantasy baseball. Um, and it's 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 kind of nice and kind of motivating to get something back in return. Um, I'm yeah. I'm super excited to do these leagues. I'm super excited because what 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 I feel last year what I wanted to do is I wanted to do weekly update videos for uh, yeah. for our leagues, uh, kind of like a, you know like a baseball tonight type of thing where every week I'd kind of recap what happened um, and make it kind of entertaining for. Um, all of our viewers and and for myself it'd be kind of fun just to do but you know yeah. uh, as you know with five leagues and as time went on I, I kind of lost the motivation but I think with the Patreon leagues I'm going to have that motivation going through the entire season because I'm going to feel obligated now to get those done Yeah. so that's something that yep. I really want to do to add some value to these leagues yeah just takes the dumb guys to the next level yeah so, um, so with that said I mean uh you know, we already we already said it. March twentieth is the first games, uh, yeah. so we need to get our leagues solidified before the end of March, so that we can schedule some live online drafts and get everything locked down for that. So, if you guys are interested in playing in one of our Patreon leagues, go to our Patreon page, get signed up for the uh, for the fantasy baseball uh, tier and um, do it before the end of February so we can get this going. 
Yeah, great. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. Um, and with that, all you right. know, just before we before we get into our sleepers, because I know everybody's waiting for our sleepers, um, I do want to throw a shout out. We've had a couple of early adapters to our Patreon page, and I just want to give a shout out to those yeah. guys. Um, Jeff A. Odie, I think that's I'm saying his name properly. Um, he was one of our first uh, patrons to to join us, and uh, he's been real active on on commenting and everything like that. So Jeff, thanks for joining. Um, appreciate yep. the comments, and, and uh, definitely want to keep that conversation going. Um, yeah. And also, we got uh, Eric Sabine joined us as well. So a couple of guys joining joining our uh, our Patreon leagues, getting it going quick. Um, they were kind of like pre-launch. Uh, joining the page and so super excited to have you guys uh, on board great yeah thanks guys um all right so you right. you want to get us kicked off with, with your with your sleepers here yeah let's get right into the names i know this is what you guys are looking for um and so the first name is somebody we've actually ragged on uh in the past few years because he's been ranked as high as two or three in a lot of drafts um, but i put jose altuve as number one and i know it's strange to have somebody that's ranked 12th yahoo as a sleeper but I think he's kind of like this year's Mookie Betts to where he's a little down last year. He might play like a top five, and you might get him as your second pick now. And um, 12, he's good. But I think a lot of drafts he'll fall to like the second of the middle of the second round. Yeah. And um, I think it's a great second pick for power, speed. Uh, if your league is average, he's a beast. Or if it's a points league because of the amount of hits he gets, he's great. Yeah. So look at your scoring. And um, – I don't recommend taking him as your first pick, but if he falls to second pick, I think he's somebody that could play like a top five. You know, I I, I agree with you um, a lot there because I, actually, <clears throat> I don't know if I would really call him a sleeper because when I saw him falling around twelve or right after the first round, I thought, you know what, this is almost a perfect place for Altuve. But I yeah. think if he does have numbers like he had a couple years ago, where he was also stealing a ton of bases. He's got a very high batting yeah. average, and he, I think, hitting like 24 home runs. Like, if you get a season yeah. like that out of him, I think definitely you're getting more value than a 12th round pick. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I think second base, there's a lot of names there this year, but I think a lot of those guys I'm not that high on because there's just too many red flags. They're like uh, fool's gold players, like I said yep. in the last video. Yep. Hashtag, um, hashtag like, fool's gold players. He, he hashtag fool, fool's gold video because I'm not – I'm not had, I'm not that high on say like Jed Lowry or Daniel Murphy. Oh yeah. Even though there are reasons to be high on them, that I'm not. I think there's a lot of red flags there as well, and so I think second base being filled that early by such a top notch player is valuable as well. Yeah. Right. Well, those guys are those guys you just dropped. I mean, they're getting a little bit older too, and I think the seasons that yeah. they've had, you're right. They're probably not going to uh, to maintain. They might be uh, later in the draft type of guys to pick up just in case. But um, yeah, <clears throat> I'd be more excited about a guy like Altuve who's younger and still has yeah. a lot of baseball ahead of him. Yep. Um, okay, uh, so moving on to my number one sleeper on the list. And, and again, it's one of those things like you don't think you're going to see names like this, and, and I'm going to stick with uh, with the Astros, and that's Carlos Correa um, at shortstop. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and so uh, I think he's, he's dropped all the way down to like the mid-30s uh, in the uh, yeah. rankings. And so the last couple of years, Correa's been slowed down by – some injuries. Uh, I don't think he's yeah. played in more than 115 games the past two seasons. Um, but yeah. but we know he's still young. He's got a lot of talent. He's got he's got a lot of pop. Um, and at shortstop, this is a guy who can really you know pad your stats. Um, yes, definitely. And so I think for for a guy with his talent and batting in a lineup like the Astros lineup. This is a guy who can really bring you value in the in the mid thirties, which we're talking what fourth round type of pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned him because I was keeping him as kind of my ace in the hole because I saw like Lindor going like third, yeah, and fourth, mm -hmm. and Trevor Story going about twentieth overall, yeah, in that type of range. And I actually think Carlos Correa could have a better year than either one of those next year, yeah, especially home run wise. Right, um, right. And he just and needs I, to stay he, healthy. Yeah, you just need to stay healthy. That lineup, Astros lineup is great. The Astros ballpark is really small. I think that's a great pick um, in that range. Yeah, for sure. Yep. All right. So let's see here. My phone. Excuse me. My list is on my phone. My phone keeps locking. <laughs> All right. My second pick, and that's Buster Posey. And I, I know you guys are going like so far. These are well-known people. But these are falling off people's lists because of the year they had last year. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Buster Posey, like his progress report on his injury is really good and he's set to play opening day now and supposedly he had a crack in his hip 
and some torn ligaments that was keeping him from hitting any home runs. And so basically he was just kind of flipping his wrists and hitting singles. Um, so he, we might get the 315 with 20 home runs batting average Buster Posey back. And he's all the way down at 151 Yahoo. And that's after like Contreras, Salvador Perez, and several other catchers to where typically Buster Posey's just as good or better than them. So um, 151 getting a guy that could be the best catcher in baseball, I think that's a great um, overlooked pick there. Yeah. You know, um, I've noticed him in the draft and uh, in some of the mock drafts I've done, and I've, and I've kind of passed him up. Uh, partially, you know, exactly what you're saying, like he's had a down year last year. Um, but my only concern is, is that he's now, he's a, what, a 32-year-old catcher. Um, he's about there, yeah. He hasn't hit more than 20 home runs in the past four years. Um, so, but he's good. He's, he's, he's a solid guy for, for batting average leagues. Um, mm-hmm. He does bring some OPS. And, you know, the other thing, too, is if they sign Bryce Harper... Wouldn't that be nice to have in the lineup next to next to Posey? Yeah, he. I don't know if he bat in front of him or behind him. Um, and also, I, th- I think I'm starting to think you're going to see more first base Buster Posey. And he's got like a 340 career batting average at first base. Yeah, I think that's um, probably a good move for them. I mean, you know, older yeah. catcher needs to needs to move and and kind of preserve the the body now that he's getting older. Yeah, well, the Giants also have that Joey Bart coming up, and he could be a September call up. He's like the number 20th ranked prospect in baseball, and he had like 1,000 OPS in the rookie league. So um, they need to start transitioning to first base. And if he's still catcher eligible but playing a lot of first base, I think you've got some value there. Yeah, for sure. Um, Okay, so moving on to my next pick, uh, my second pick, um, is uh, Chris Davis with the uh, the A's. And um, K-Riss. What's that? Oh, K-Riss. K-Riss, yes. Yes. Uh, is that how you pronounce it, or are you just making a making a funny? I just say K. Riss Davis to separate him from the other. Okay. Davis. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so this is a guy, dude. He hit forty eight home runs last year. He led the league. Yeah. He had one hundred and twenty three RBIs, ninety eight runs. Uh, dude, this guy is consistent when it comes to batting average. He bat he's batted two forty seven, and that's not great, but he's batted two forty seven four years in a row. Um, yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> this is a guy though that's bringing a ton of home runs. Um, that's going. He's ranked forty right now. Um, yeah, that's a ton of home runs, and he's hit forty home runs three years, forty plus home runs three years in a row. Um, so yeah. he's not slowing down. He was he was thirty last year. He's going to be thirty one. Um, you know, this could be one of those uh, Edwin and Carnacion guys who just starts hitting a ton of home runs into his thirties um, and, and yeah. maintains that power. So I think he's a great yeah. option, especially if you're trying to um, get some home runs, you know, uh, with your fifth or sixth pick. This is a good guy. Yeah, I think this is a, one of those small market team things to where this guy's consistently 40-plus home runs, but he's not getting that much recognition. Yep. And uh, if this guy's playing on the Red Sox or something, he might be a second-round pick. Everybody would be all over him. Uh, yeah. So I think that's that's another way to find those guys that are slipping under the radar is small market teams. Yep. Yeah. Great. All right, where am where am I? I'm at number three, right? Yeah, number three. Um, I like so, this pick. yeah, I got Gleyber Torres, and um, like I, I know this is another one you guys already know about, but in the um, rush of all these young, unlimited ceiling type players, it seems like Gleyber Torres is the one that's getting picked last, just about. And I don't think he's the least talented of that group by a long shot. Um, plus, he's second base and shortstop eligible, and um, I could think thirty home runs. And maybe 10, anywhere between 10 and 20 stolen bases is very realistic for him next year. And um, and he's going after, like, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Um, you know, Ronald Acuna is going, like, 10th. Yeah. And that Soto is going in the 20s, maybe about 30. And I think Gleyber Torres will be about that level this year. But going clear down, it, he's ranked 61 Yahoo. Uh, when I was doing the fantasy pros, he's down the 80s. So, yeah. um, you know, uh, I think that's a lot of value with there. With Vladimir Guerrero Jr. going ahead of him, that's crazy because that's a guy that has no yeah. proven track record. You're going basically just off of prospect value. And look, I mean, that guy yeah. has been hyped, you know, up the wazoo, and I think he's probably going to prove to be uh, a value. But a guy like Glaber Torres, who was hyped as well, and then came into the league and did what he did. I mean, he had a great um, season last year. He hit 24 yeah. home runs. And uh, he didn't play a, a full season because he was dealing with some some minor injury issues. Um, but I think he's going to come back, and uh, you know he's going to be a regular fixture in the Yankees lineup. And the Yankees, yeah, that you, 
I don't know if you if you're following what the Yankees are doing, but they're building to be a dynasty again. They're bringing in yeah, some some big guys uh, every year. They want to win, um, and everybody knows that what the Yankees you know want to do. And they gotta they gotta fight the Red Sox. They gotta battle back and and kind of take that uh, East Coast dominance back. So they're in it to win. Yeah. Yeah, they are. And with Didi Gregorius out, I think Gleyber Torres for sure going to be in there just about every day. Um, so, yeah, I think they're some people are missing out on the young unlimited ceiling there by waiting so late. Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, okay, mm-hmm. moving on to the next guy on my list, and I I hesitated to put him on this list because he did burn me last year, but uh-huh. he's going so deep. That's Joey Votto. Joey Votto. Oh yeah. I mean, it, this is a guy who is just a very talented baseball player. And um, last year, I think was uh, you know was an anomaly for him. He only hit 12 home runs last year, but the previous three years he hit 29, 29, and 36. Um, yeah. You know, regularly this guy's leading the league in um, on base percentage, and he did again last year, even though his uh, his power numbers were down. Um, yeah. And I think the uh, the Reds are bringing in some some talent as well that will help that lineup get some more excitement going. I think where he's ranked, um, he's he's definitely, you know, bringing a little bit more value. Definitely. Great. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. He's one of those guys that could return to his form. He's going to have more new guys around him. And I think next year's just a down year. Yeah. You know, he'll, he'll come back. Yep. All right. Um, where are we? Okay. My fourth pick is Zach Wheeler. Now, this is a guy that I know is a little controversial because he's been up and down, missed some time with injuries. Uh, but I think he's always had great stuff, been projected to be an ace. Um, and he's ranked 116 Yahoo. And he's going after some guys like um, Archer and Tanaka, and I think I'd rather have Zach Wheeler than those guys. Um, and last year, the last two months of the season, he was one of the best pitchers in baseball, so he's got a lot of momentum going into this year. And he kind of fits, kind of, say, like a like a mold that I have for finding pitchers that will be your ace, like around this range in the draft. You've got some good sample size, and he's just ready to break out and have a good full season. Um, so I think he's a good guy to look out for around this range at 116. Yeah. Yeah, his year wasn't too bad last year. I mean, he had 12 wins with the Mets, and the Mets weren't very good last year, yeah. were they? Um, no, they weren't. And if you can actually consider, the like, I think either the first or second month of the season, he had an ERA over six for a month. Wow. And so the rest of the year was really good around that month. Yeah, because he, he ended the season with a 331 batting average. Um, I mean... This is a this is a Mets team where Degrom couldn't get a win, you know, to save his life. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Um. To 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 pitch to twelve wins with that team, I mean, that's definitely uh, that says something. So yeah, he did have yeah, May was not a good uh, month for him. He didn't. He six forty three yeah. ERA. Um, but yeah, you're right. He went down the stretch and and he ended the year with some pretty good looking numbers. Um. So. Yeah. Yeah, I like that pick. Um, All right. Okay, moving on to my number four pick, and that is Corey Seager. So, oh. um, so Seager is a guy who I think burned some people last year um, because he got hurt. So he's a shortstop. Yeah. He only played in twenty six games last year, um, but he's healthy. He's um, expected to play opening day, um, and you know, I think the Dodgers are still excited to go and win. Um, so he could be a steal at where at where he's dropping. I think he was going. I mean, this guy won a rookie of the year just a couple years ago, and uh, he's yeah. dropping all the way down to uh, 51 in the rankings. And I think a year ago he was way ahead of that. So it's another shortstop. I got a lot of shortstops on my list uh, yeah. that uh, that could uh, you know bring you some value. Yeah, you know, I he's one of those guys you forget existed because he Dodgers were playing the World Series and he wasn't there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and he's got a great level of talent. So yeah, don't forget he exists. And when you're drafts. Yeah, I mean, this is, a, this is a shortstop who hit 26 home runs and then 22 home runs before he got hurt. And uh, so, you know, a shortstop that brings that kind of power. And, I mean, he's, he, he has yeah. a lifetime batting average of 302. So, um, yep. you know, he's he's all around uh, a good hitter. Yep, definitely. Yeah, I'm glad you brought him up because I think I was forgetting about him. Um, all right, so my number five is Matt Olson. He's ranked 86 Yahoo. Um, and I know it's a guy that a lot of people were high on last year. He might let you down a little bit because he, you know, he only hit 29 home runs, and people are thinking only he's a 40 home run home type runs. talent. Yeah, only 29. Um, and I think he's still got that 40 home run potential. He's still really young. Um, the A's, you know, he has K. Riz Davis on the same team, and uh, 
I think he's good. And Matt Chapman, I think that that young core is going to be quite the murderer's row next year. And uh, I it, and another thing is like if you look at the first base rankings above Matt Olson, his first good first baseman below Matt Olson is not good first baseman. So I think if you haven't gotten a first baseman yet at the Matt Olson pick, you better take him. So he's like the last you'll be really sc- first baseman. You got to grab. Yeah. Him. Yeah, you got to grab him or you're going to be really struggling at first base. Unless you've got a real deep ace in the hole first baseman you like. Yeah. Um, I think Matt, Matt Olson is uh, kind of that place to where it's like, if you don't have first base yet, you better take him. Um, so I think he's a, he's a good guy to have in your mind. And where is he ranking? He's ranking 86 on Yahoo? Yeah, the last I checked, he's at 86. Okay. Um, yeah. Nice. I might have some more and I think a fo- aces in the hole. Yeah, so... Uh, I think at 86, 40 home run potential, you know, is great. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy who he burst onto the scene. I mean, really, you can consider last year his sophomore season, right? Because he he played in uh, 11 games in 2016. He played in 59 games in 2017 where he hit 24 home runs, and that's where all the hype came, right? His OPS was over over 1,000. But then last year, only 29 in in basically a full season. I mean, literally played 162 games last year. Um, so, yeah. so you know what? I think that's a really good option. He could bounce back. He could hit a ton of home runs um, and, uh, you know, kind of go back to not – I mean, obviously he's not going to hit 50 home runs in a season like he was pacing the yeah. year before, but he could definitely do more yeah. than 29. Yep, definitely. Um, okay. My next pick is uh, is a pitcher, my first pitcher, and that's Mike Fulton Whites. Um, Mike Fulton – oh, yes. I almost added him to my list. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fulton White's, I mean, dude, this guy had a really good season last year. Now, the thing that kind of frightens me with him is that he has had some pretty inflated ERAs in the past. But last uh-huh. season, things came together for him. In his in his age yeah. 26 season, his ERA was 285. He won 13 games with the Braves. I know the Braves are young. The Braves are, uh, you know... They're, they're, they they were a surprise run to the playoffs last season when I don't think people thought they were another year or two away, right? Um, yeah, definitely. And his uh, his strikeout uh, per nine rate went up to 9.9, so almost 10 strikeouts oh. per uh, per nine. So um, I think this is a guy you want to keep your eye on, and, uh, you know, he's, he's like I said, he's only 26, so he's still got some life in him. Yeah. Yeah, I saw him pitch a couple games on TV, and he was throwing like 97, 98 miles an hour. So he's got that ace stuff on a top-notch team. So if you can get a guy that late, that's great. Yeah, and I swooped him mid-season last year as a, as a pickup, and uh, he was great for me. Yeah, definitely. All right, so I got my first pitcher. I believe. No, I had Zach Wheeler already. But uh, my next pitcher is uh, Derek Rodriguez, and he's ranked 350 Yahoo. Um, and he's that Giants rookie. He's their, like their one bright spot out of last season. He had a 280 ERA as a rookie. Um, on, and he got, you know, a decent amount of wins on a Giants team that provides no run support. So hopefully the Giants put together a little bit better lineup this year and he can continue that motivation and in, that momentum into next year. Now, there are a couple of small red flags in that his last two, like he had about a 220 ERA until his, his last two starts of the season. The last two starts of the season was worth that great and got that up a little bit. Um, and... Also, the Giants may start him, like not in the starting rotation, and then put him in the starting rotation like after the first month of the year just to kind of save his young arm. Yeah. Um, they kind of, they're kind of talking about doing that, and they have like eight starters right now. Um, so <clears throat> just watch how it goes. Watch the first month of the season, but clear down at 350 for a potential um, minus three ERA with a lot of wins type of pitcher. I think that's a guy to keep as an ace in a hole in case like you get an injury in your starting rotation or something yeah, like that a- on your team. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a that's a stash him and wait and see what happens kind of guy. Um, yeah. You're basically not gambling anything. He could be your last pick or you know one of your last picks that you're just filling your bench with. Uh, this is Pudge's yeah. kid, right? Yeah, the Pudge's uh, son. Yeah, yep. you can tell. It looks just like him. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, he uh, he did have a pretty good uh, you know introduction to the majors last year. Uh, not a lot of strikeouts, but if he can keep his ERA no, he's about low, eight strikeouts per nine type rate. Yeah, range and uh, um, and he's pitching in that big ballpark to, to where um, home runs go to die. Yeah, so right. Yeah, I think it'll help him. Out. It helps him out a lot. Absolutely. Um, okay, good pick. Um, okay, my next pick is I'm actually surprised that this guy isn't hyped a little bit more, um, and that's Aaron Hicks play in center field for the the Yankees. Uh Uh-huh. So last year, 
Hicks hit 27 home runs. I mean, this guy was a was a pretty uh, hyped player when he got traded from Minnesota over to the Yankees, um, and I think he kind of finally broke out. It was his 20 his year 28 um, season, and uh, you know 27 home runs, 79 RBIs in 137 games. Um, what I noticed about him is he really has a very good um, plate discipline. Uh, he could go. Oh, yeah. He was walking almost every game. Um, and he had 90 walks, so his OPS uh, or his batting average um, isn't that high, but his his on base percentage is pretty decent um, the past couple of years. And yeah. I think I, I think part of that is going to the Yankees, where they uh, preach patience and you know take your walks. Um, you know they've got and and again, I don't know if I have to say this again, but the Yankees got one heck of a lineup to bat in. So to have him batting yeah. at the top of it, uh, which oftentimes he did. Um, you know, he's just asking to score runs. He scored 90 runs last season, so I think he's a great uh, outfield option. Yeah, and it sounds like if you have an OPS league, low batting average won't matter that much. So right. Um, that's, that's so check your got. scoring and when you pick that guy up. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see here. Now, number seven, and this is the guy I probably, like, hate the most in baseball right now, but I just had to add him to this list. That's Yasiel Puig. Um, he's going clear down at 91 Yahoo!, and he went to the Reds, and I think the Reds, I've heard their ballpark called the Great American Small Park <laughs> because it's its just little and home runs fly right out of there. And a guy like Adam Duvall, who when he was on the Giants didn't do anything, all of a sudden he goes to the Reds and hits 30 home runs. I think Yasuo Puig's more talented than Adam Duvall, and so who knows what he could do there. And he's even got some speed, and they, the Reds will let guys run. I mean, they've had Billy Hamilton, Scooter Jeanette, even Joey Votto steals bases for them sometimes. Um, and so you might see a combination of power and speed out of him. The only drawback is if he starts doing his crazy stuff he does, gets benched, you know, something like that. Yeah, right. um, but I think talent-wise and playing in that small ballpark, I think clear down at 91, um, you, you're not going wrong there. Yeah, I don't think we've you seen, might, might. I, I don't think we've seen uh, you know, his power potential yet. And I think you're right. I mean, yeah. going to the Reds ballpark um, and, and, you know, as he gets into his real power years um we could see him break the 30 mark he hasn't done that yet 28 is his is his cap on home runs yeah. um but absolutely i mean he's, he's solid all around i mean you know his batting average is in the 260s his ops is, yeah. you know in the you know 800s um you know with 20 something home runs i mean that's a decent guy 15 steals filling some stats um i think you're right i think he could be a good uh, a good option and, and and who knows what a change of scenery will do for him he's been with the the Dodgers. And you know what I notice about the Dodgers? It seems like the Dodgers uh -huh. get a lot of talented guys, um, but they kind of overfill with talented guys, and they don't uh -huh. always get the opportunity to develop into their yeah. potential. Um, I think I've seen yeah. that you know several times over the year. They're like just a little bit crowded um, with their with their prospects, and they don't um, they don't really you know develop them all the way into the stars that they could be. Yeah, and I think that they switch positions on guys a lot. Like, if you notice, the Dodgers guys will play all over the diamond during the course of a year, mm -hmm. and Puig would be all over the outfield. And some you, you just never know if that affects their hitting to where maybe the Reds just plug him into a spot and let him go, and if maybe he'll do better. Yeah, right. I agree. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, you, you'll probably like this next pick of mine, another uh -huh. another pitcher, um, and that's Madison Bumgarner. Uh, oh. So he's coming off of two shortened seasons due to fluky injuries. Right, he's mm -hmm. only pitched. Uh, he pitched uh, 17 starts and 21 starts um, the past two years. This is a, a yes. perennial 33, 34 start guy, and I mean, mm -hmm. just a stud, man. I mean, it's Bumgarner, yeah. dude. This guy it was was a top, you know, what top 30 pick type of guy um, before these yeah. two years. So he's kind of just fallen off the radar. But there's nothing that that says that he's not going to come back and be that guy again as long as he doesn't have i mean yeah. what what happened last year he got a line drive in spring training and he broke his hand yep something like that broke his pinky finger yeah and then yeah. and then the year before was a freaking motorcycle accident so yes i mean these are just fluky injuries i mean this is a guy over the past 10 years 13 plus wins 191 plus strikeouts uh you know six straight seasons in a row dude this guy is you know He's solid, and he's going all the way yeah, down definitely. to 104. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, man. definitely. And uh, he, 
And uh, I think some people point to like his fastball is a couple miles an hour slower than in the past. But I think that could have been just uh, missing spring training, being behind the times, not in all the way play, playing shape. Um, and maybe with a full spring training, I actually saw some Giants beach riders in spring before he broke his pinky going, this might be Bumgarner's career year because he looks so good in spring training and then he break, breaks his pinky finger. Yeah. Um, so I think you're good there. And a lot of people are like out there taking David Price and stuff over him. Um, so, But I would definitely have Bumgarner over the guys going around him. So I think that's a good pick. Um, let's see here. So my next pick, and this is a guy I kind of wish the Giants kind of went out and tried for, and that's Jonathan Scope. Um, he's ranked clear down at 178 Yahoo, and he's only like a 26, 27 year old guy. And he's had some great seasons already, um, and he signed a one year deal with Minnesota to basically take Brian Dozier's spot at second base there. And I think he's going to be really motivated to bounce back and get a big contract next year. Um, so I would say look for him to return to that 25 to 30 home run range. I just think he wasn't comfortable in Milwaukee when he's traded at the trade deadline, and before that on the Orioles, he he dealt with some nagging injuries. Um, so I think last year's a little bit of fluke, and he's fallen. He fell too far because of that down year last year, and at, and at second base, this is, could go, be your ace in the hole. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for second base, I think this is a guy. You know, that is deep. That is deep in the draft. Yeah. Um, and for a guy who can pop off thirty home runs and have a hundred RBIs in um, in a second base position, I think you're right. I think this is a guy that you got to keep your eyes on. And if he does drop anywhere near that, you got to you got to snatch him up. Um, even if he's yep. your second, you know your second second baseman, yeah. your backup second baseman, um, you know, he can be extremely valuable. Um, I would take Definitely. him. I would take him for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Going on to my next guy, and this is one of my first base, uh, you know, um, aces in the hole that we that I was talking about earlier, and, and that's uh, Max Muncy. So, okay. yeah. and, and again, going back to the Dodgers, I kind of feel like this is another guy who um, – you know, the Dodgers didn't really give a chance to, even though he was like one of their best hitters last year. At one mm -hmm. point, they took him out of the regular lineup. He wasn't playing regularly. So he played in 137 yeah. games last year. He hit 35 home runs, 79 RBIs. He was batting 263. Uh, now, you know, granted, he did come out of nowhere, uh, but I read a lot of yeah. articles about him and how he changed his swing. Um, so when he was yeah. playing with Oakland, he, you know, this guy had absolutely no power at all, and then he went to a different swing, and then all of a sudden, boom, it clicked. Um, and this yeah. guy, you know, he's dropped all the way down to 128. And again, like you said, you know, for for a guy, um, you know, for a first baseman, this is a good option. He's also eligible for second and third. Yeah, they moved him around a little bit. Yeah, so that's a great one to keep an eye on. Um, I thought there's a little risk there just because he's never done it before, but... You know, if he does even just 28 home runs or something like that, he's, he could still be valued with how well, far down he is. I, I think you're right. This guy could be your hashtag fool's gold player. But yeah. um, but where he's going, you know, it's like I'm not I'm not saying to um, to draft this guy, you know, very much, you know, sooner than where he is. But he can definitely be yeah. more value than the 128 pick where he's where he's ranked yeah. right now, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And there's some home runs late there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so my ninth is Orge Alfaro, which I'm sure you guys will pronounce me on that pronunciation because I'm usually never right. Um, <laughs> he's ranked clear down at 289 Yahoo, but he's one of the guys that's just traded for JT Real Muto um, to be the Marlins' full-time catcher. He's got power potential. He, um, maybe his contact rate won't be the best, but the Marlins got him to be their catcher of the future, like full-time starter now and in the future. And clear down at 289, um, once in a while, catchers like that panic position in the draft. If you know a guy like this, it keeps you from panicking and drafting like a catcher you don't truly want with a pick where you know, you could have gotten somebody with more value. So keep this guy in the back of your mind as you're drafting, and if that catcher you truly wanted went, don't panic and uh, fall back maybe on this guy. Yeah, yeah, it's always nice to have a, a, a catcher kind of in the back of your mind just in case because there's, you know, any time in that draft, you can have a run on catchers. Um, and then that guy you thought, oh, you know, he was my backup guy, and he's like four rounds later, but he gets swooped up because everybody's like, oh, I gotta get, yeah. a, I gotta get a catcher now. Um, so catchers are yeah. one of those ones they don't go where they're ranked; they go when yeah. the rest of your league is drafting um, because they want to get them, yes. get them ahead of time. So um, yeah, a lot of times the first catcher goes, and all of a sudden here goes three or four catchers, and their their reaches um, exactly. So and you don't want to fall into that. Yeah. Um, and he's not bad. I mean, this guy, you know, he's he's batted uh, 362 last season in uh, 108 games, 
10 home runs. He's yeah. got a lot of potential there. And, um, you know, the Marlins, with what they're doing, you know, they're rebuilding, obviously, um, with the new ownership. Uh, you know, they probably saw, you know, some positive things in this guy. So to make that trade. Definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So my next uh, first baseman ace in the hole is Luke Voigt. Um, okay. The and so Luke Voigt, uh, you know, got traded to the Yankees uh, last season and was just amazing. He was amazing down the mm -hmm. stretch. I mean, this guy in 39 games hit 14 home runs. Um, and, I mean, it was like all – he. so he basically pushed Bird out, out of the picture. This guy was the first uh -huh. baseman. And, and it wasn't just his power. Like, he – it seemed like every time he came up to the plate, he was, he was doing something. He came through every time. Yeah. Um, and as you guys yeah. know, I'm a Yankees fan, right? So I watched a lot of Yankee games yeah. last year. And, um, yeah, this guy was definitely coming through um, every time he came up to bat almost. And so, you know, it's mm -hmm. pretty exciting to see a guy like this ranked down at 230. The Yankees don't have a solid first baseman. Um, and so he can definitely be the first baseman um, for 2019. Yeah, I've seen him on other sleepers lists. And so... I think there's other people agree with you that he's going late and you might get a lot of value. If he plays like that, how he did for the Yankees down the stretch for a full season, you've got a beast. Yep, for sure. Yeah. All right, great. So I'm at the 10th pick, which is good because I'm looking at my battery life. I might only have one more pick left in it. Okay. Um, Byron Buxton. Um, he's ranked 170 Yahoo. And I know he let a lot of us down. I picked him on a couple teams last year and he did nothing. Um, he's basically injured or playing bad. Um but remember, he was once the number one prospect in all of baseball. He's still very young. He's got a great combination of power and speed. And you may get that uh, 20 home run, 20 stolen base type guy out of here, clear down at 170, where that typically goes in the top three rounds of the draft. Um, and at 170, it's not that much of a risk. In, oh, oh, no, 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 sorry. I thought my camera stopped. Fal it's going. False alarm. Um, false alarm. Um, but, like, it, that... 2020 power late in the game um i would take a flyer on him you know as as long as my i feel like at that point my team has has got a good depth at that point this guy could take your team over the top if he truly performs to his potential yeah for sure and you know what i saw him on your list and so i didn't put him on my list but i was going to um yeah you're yeah. right i mean this guy uh was one of the top prospects in baseball had a couple of decent seasons with the twins um and then you know everything kind of fell apart last year um i think most of that yeah. was due to injury um, I think he had yeah. he had nagging injuries through the season, um, and yeah. uh, so what he did was he went and bulked up this off season. He's coming back yeah. uh, a little bit bulkier, um, so he can kind of play. I, what I read uh, him, he quoted himself saying uh, um, that he, if he wants to play the way he plays, which is running into walls and mm -hmm. and and being aggressive, he he needed to have some more padding there. So he bulked up um, so he can come back this year and 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 get back to it. So. I think he's a good uh, yeah. he's a good option down at 170 to bounce back. Yeah, and I think you got a Byron Buxton playing through toe pain last year. Then you got a healthy Byron Buxton with 20 more pounds of muscle this year. So I'm, you know, it might be fun to pick him up and just see how good he gets. Yeah, and again, he's only 25, I think. So yeah. um, a lot of baseball ahead of this guy. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, well, since we're talking about the Twins, my uh, last pick is uh, Michael Pineda. And so, oh. um, you know, Michael Pineda is one of those guys who never quite lived up to expectations. There mm -hmm. was a lot of hype when he got traded from the, um, the Mariners to the Yankees. And yeah. he had a good short little stint with the Yankees back in 2014. He had some short stints of success throughout the the you know the next few years he got traded um to the twins and then he was out all last year uh i don't i don't know if it was tommy john he had he he it's some kind of injury he's mm -hmm. back now and so this is a guy who we might see at least contribute some um uh, as a yeah. pitcher he's just a guy you know i'm not gonna say he's gonna come out and he's gonna be you know that that sub three era guy that uh, everybody expected uh -huh. him to be but, you know, this is a guy who, you know, he, he's had um, nine strikeouts per nine. Um, so he's, he's, got, uh, he's got some good stuff. Um, and he could just, again, contribute in a big ballpark like the Twins have. Definitely. 
Um, yeah, and if you know, he just needs to do a better job of hiding his pine tar and that sort of thing. Exactly. And maybe he'll do good. Exactly. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, great. So I think that's our list, right? That was yeah. that was ten for both of us. Now I do have a couple of honorable mentions that I want to throw out there if that's yeah. all right. Um, yeah. And and you know, again, I mean, I can't help it. I'm a I'm a Yankees fan. So my my first honorable yeah. mention is uh, Clint Frazier. So this guy okay. is uh, not ranked. Um, uh-huh. He is a super highly touted prospect. He came over in the Andrew Miller trade, I think, from uh, uh-huh. from the Indians. And uh, was it the Indians or I think it was the Indians. Um, but he so he was expected to compete last year for one of the outfield spots, um, uh, you know, on the Yankees. And uh, uh, he got um, in spring training. He got a concussion. So. He, uh, uh-huh. he was basically out all year, but he's back. He's healthy. Again, a lot of hype from this guy um, as a prospect. So, you know, he's another one of those guys who you can you can um, grab him, stash him, wait and see what happens. When spring training is done, he could be, you know, he could take Brett Gardner's spot in the outfield of uh, in the Yankees. Um, and just like every one of the Yankees I've mentioned, um, you know, if you're batting in that lineup, it's a good place to be. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then I've got one more uh, honorable mention here, and this is actually a um, uh, a pick from one of our viewers, Chris Williams. Actually, uh, commented uh, on a video this morning, and uh, he asked what I thought about this guy, and that's Fran Mill Reyes. And uh, to be honest, I, I hadn't really heard of him. He's playing in San Diego. Uh, he only played eighty-seven games last year, but um, I wanted to, to give him credit for this guy because I looked at him and I said, you know what? He's a pretty good uh, sleeper option. I mean, he's ranked down at 195 yeah. in Yahoo, 246 on ESPN. He batted 280 last year. He had 16 home runs, 31 RBIs, 838 OPS, and only 87 games. Um, yeah. So that's definitely a um, good call, Chris. Yeah, definitely. Great. Um, well, honorable mention for me could be to like watch the Giants and see if Mac Williamson wins a left field job. Uh-huh. He was a beast when he was healthy last yep. year, and um, just kind of a funny one is uh, Hunter Pence just got a minor league contract with the Rangers. I saw that, and uh, he's a, yeah, he's he's kind of a funny guy. So um, um, just watch him. Like he, who knows what he could do right. if he wins a spart- starting spot. So that um, I don't really think you'll, he'll end up on many teams, but who knows? Yeah, that'd be um, interesting. Yeah, but anyway. Um, I think those we got some good names for you guys, at least to start to, um, getting ready for your team out there. And let us know um, if you think of some other good ones. Oh, my son's sneaking in right now. <laughs> so he's going to make an appearance on the video real awesome. quick. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, no, um, def- anyway. definitely, like, you know, leave your comments below. Let us know what you think of our list. If you got any more uh, any more sleeper ideas, let us know. And maybe we'll mention them in yeah. a video um, going forward. Love to hear from you guys. Um, again... If you want to play in a dumb guys league, go check out our Patreon page and uh, and 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 join us. You know, like I said, I wanna I wanna have uh, you know I wanna I wanna add a lot of value this year to those leagues. So if you played with us before um, and uh, you know it was kind of fun, I want to make it super fun this year. I want to do a lot of stuff. So so check out the uh, the Patreon page and, and join one of our leagues. Okay, thanks. And I think you just heard my son burp. So <laughs> th- thanks for watching and. Uh, And uh, thanks for liking and all that good stuff. (laughs) And as always, stay dumb. Stay dumb. Dumb guys.